A compound shaft that consists of an outside tube number one and an inner tube number two that are fully connected together along the length of the element. We want to determine what is the maximum allowable torque that could be applied on a compound shaft if the allowable shear stress in the outer shaft is 85 megapascals and allowable shear stress the inner shaft is 65 megapascals. This is actually a very practical problem because we do work with compound shafts and in many cases they are made of two different materials and we want to know what would be the maximum torque that the shaft could take. And in order to solve that we need to start from the free body diagram. Before that let me write down some initial data that we have that always help. I, if I want to determine J for the outer tube, that would be pi over 32 external diameter, which in this case D1 to the fourth minus internal diameter, which in this case is D2. Same is true for J2. The external diameter of that shaft is D2 and internal diameter of that is D3. So I would plug in the value and get this number for J. Okay. Now let's start with the free body diagram. We are going to cut that. There will be two torques outward from the surface and that would give us T1 plus T2 is equal to that external torque that is acting on a system. We don't know how much is that external torque so I'm just going to leave it as T. Here we have three unknowns in this problem. I'm going to call that equation number one and then move on to the relationship between torques and twists. Twist in shaft number one is going to be TL over GJ. L is going to be the same for both of these two shafts, so I'm just going to use L and then I'm going to plug in the values. T1 is unknown. L, as I said, I'm just going to leave it as L. G1 it is 35 gigapascals, which I have to convert it into megapascals. And J1 is just calculated. That would give me T1L divided by 118.2 times 10 to the 9th. Similar to that, I'm going to determine phi2, plug in the numbers, and we get T2 multiplied by L divided by 103.4 times 10 to the 9th. Okay, so far is very straightforward, similar to the steps that we have done in all other indeterminate problems. All right, now I'm going to go and write down the compatibility of deformation. This is category number two when two elements are fully connected together. That means phi1 is equal to phi2 and plug in phi1 and phi2 from step number two and we have calculated those. If I want to solve that symbolically T1 would be J1 G1 divided by G2 J2 multiplied by T2 and then if I plug in the values I would get another relationship between torques. Okay so this is the second equation that I was looking for now I'm going to combine equation number one and two together and solve it for torque. You can see that there are three unknowns, T1, T2, and T. I'm going to determine internal torques in terms of external torque, which we haven't determined yet. So T1 would be 0.467T and T2 would be 0.533T. Let's look at these numbers. These are given what portion of torque taken by each of these two shafts. As we can see, tube number two is getting more portion, is getting more torque because it's bigger and it, it is more rigid. I haven't solved this problem yet. If I want to determine the magnitude of external torque T, I need to use the allowable shear stress. Shear stress in element number one is TC over J. And that has to be smaller than the allowable shear stress in element number one. Torque in element number one is 0.467T. C1 is the external diameter of element number 1 divided by 2 because we are looking for the maximum shear stress divided by J1 and set that smaller than the allowable stress which is 85 megapascals. From this equation we can determine how much is the maximum torque that tube number 1 can take. This is the maximum torque that the tube number 1 can take but we are not done yet. We need to check that again for tube number 2. Stress in tube number two is TC over GJ and that has to be smaller than the allowable stress. Torque is 0.533T multiply that by the external diameter of that tube which is 90 divided by 2 because that's smaller and then divide that by J and set that smaller than the allowable stress which is 65 megapascals. Now I would get another torque. All right I got two numbers. Which one is going to be the right answer for this problem? 
smaller one because that is going to fail sooner.